Hello and welcome to a new episode of Under 360 English. So this is the seventh episode in the series of Fundamental Analysis Tutorial. So before we proceed further, as I told you earlier itself, you please download a copy of HUL annual report with you. You can download it from either the company website, HUL website or from uh, any of the exchanges like uh, BSE or NSE exchange. Because we are taken HUL annual report for example and based on that only we are discussing. That's just taken for example. So if that's handy with you, it will be easy for you to understand the discussion as well as to the tutorials. So stay tuned, keep watching. We know that uh, the PNL statement, PNL statement of a company that only gives you the information on the income, expenditures, and overall profitability of the company. So the balance sheet, on the other hand, that gives you an idea about how much a company earns and how much a company owes. So it gives you a complete information on all the assets and liabilities of the company, including the details of its share capital. Generally, there are two parts of the balance sheet. One is assets and second one is equity and liabilities. So if you take up the balance sheet of a company, you will always find that the value of the assets equals the value of the equity and liabilities. This is the true essence of a balance sheet. In fact, there is a logical reason why the assets are always equal to the equity and liabilities in the balance sheet of a company. You see, all the assets that the company owns that have to be funded either from through borrowings. Borrowings means that's a liability or that's a share capital only, isn't it? So therefore, both the sides are always equally balanced. That's why it's called as balance sheet. On other ways, the company's liabilities that are supposed to be converted as assets. Next, uh, we shall try to uh, read through the balance sheet of uh, a company. Uh, just like uh, we did in the previous uh, sessions, we will uh, take up the balance sheet of uh, HUL itself for the sake of continuity. So you please pause this video here and take some moment to read through the balance sheet and familiarize yourself with the layout of the structure. I hope uh, all of you quickly went through it. Uh, since the layout of this structure is very much similar to the PNL statement, uh, we will get directly to the core of the matter. Let's take up each section of the balance sheet and try to understand the terms and its meanings, starting with the asset side. First is assets. So the asset side of the balance sheet that constitutes two categories. One is non-current assets and second one is current assets. Let's discuss both these things. First is non-current assets or NC assets. This is typically called as long-term assets. So these are the assets that are held by a company for the for, for more than the past one year. So non-current assets cannot be easily or quickly converted into cash. In the case of a HUL balance sheet, you can find property, plant and equipment as non-current assets. That has been given in the balance sheet. So this line, that term, Constitute of all the fixed assets like uh, land, buildings, plant, equipment, furniture and fixtures and uh, other office equipments that are generally owned or leased by the company. So in the case of uh, note 3 of the financial statement, uh, those, that goes further details about uh, regarding the assets that has been shown here. So note 3 also gives you the detailed breakup of the assets on that uh, leased by the company. It classifies these fixed assets according to the nature. Also the note, uh, that particular note contains a detailed information about the new purchases made during the year. Uh, also along with that the uh, disposal of assets uh, via sale or and the value of the depreciation of the assets. Everything has been given. You please have a look on this uh, balance sheet if you are handy with the balance sheet with you you please go through it else you pause this video here and uh, evaluate the numbers on screen other thing you can find it is capital work in progress cwip all the costs associated with the production or construction of a fixed asset are classified as 
capital work in progress for example all the costs incurred on the construction of a building by the company that is called as capital work in progress some other assets like goodwill and other intangible assets so goodwill uh, that, that is essentially the reputation built by the company over the many years of its existence so it is generally quantified and disclosed as an intangible assets in the balance sheet of any company similar to property plant or equipment the in depth details of goodwill and other intangible assets are also specified here in note 4 of the financial statement other type of assets is the financial assets financial assets consists of all the long term investments made by the company in its subsidiaries or associated companies and uh, even joint ventures in addition to that long term deposits or financial market investments and loans issued to other companies are also being included note 5 through note 8 gives you the in depth information about the non current financial assets owned by the company other one is a non current tax assets and deferred tax assets all the long term assets that can be utilized by a company to reduce the taxable income at the future date are classified either as a non current tax assets or deferred tax assets for example over payment of taxes or advance payment of taxes that are classified as non current tax asset because uh, they can be used to reduce the tax liability of the company at a future date next one is the other non current assets all the other ancillary and uh, miscellaneous long term assets that cannot be classified under any of the above mentioned categories are typically classified under other non current assets next comes the current assets so current assets of a company that are expected to be converted into cash within a span of 1 year and are generally classified as uh, current assets they are also known as uh, short term assets also and uh, they can be easily sold or converted to cash so in the case of hul balance sheet you can find the following things as the current assets one is the inventory the stock of goods and materials that a company holds is generally categorized as inventories inventories can be anything from raw material and packaging material to work in progress and finished goods not 11 of the financial statement of hul gives you the detailed breakup of all the inventories held by the company in that current year other is financial assets so unlike uh, non current financial assets these financial assets consist of all the short term investments held by the company that includes uh, short term financial market uh, investments or bank balances or cash balance and uh, trade receivables also so trade receivables you may have doubt that uh, what is trade receivables so trade receivables are uh, essentially the products that sold by the company for which the payments are yet to be received that means the collection is pending in the case of hul notes uh, 6 8 to 12 13 uh, i think 14 also go into the details of the current financial assets that are owned by the company next is about uh, the other current assets all the other ancillary and financial miscellaneous uh, short term assets that cannot be classified under any of the uh, previously mentioned categories are typically classified under other current assets other type of asset is assets held for sale under this category non current assets that a company hopes to dispose of uh, by selling them within the period of 1 year this is classified as assets held for sale so those assets are reclassified by shifting them from the non current assets section to the current assets section so that it can be sold at the earliest and that can be converted into cash so total assets that is the all the values of the asset side of the balance sheet that is uh, summed up that's added up and indicated under total assets next comes equity and liabilities the equity and liabilities of the balance sheet uh, consists of three primary categories one is equity second one is non current liabilities third one is current liabilities generally equity had a uh, consists of uh, two subdivisions one is equity share capital and second one is other equity in the case of equity share capital that shows the total paid up value of the equity share capital of a company a detailed break up of the equity share capital including the number of authorized share authorized equity shares 
the number of uh, issued and paid up equity shares and the face value of the shares that can be found in the notes to financial statement section. And uh, second subsection subdivision that you can find under equity is the other equity. So this consists of other equity balances such as uh, securities premium and outstanding employee stock option etc etc. So all the other reserves of the company such as capital reserve or capital redemption reserve uh, and uh, retained earnings also appear under this uh, particular head. A summary of various items under the other equity tab of the balance sheet can also be found under the notes section that is given in the balance sheet. Next is the liabilities. Similar to the asset side of the balance sheet, the liability section also consists of two subcategories like uh, non-current liabilities and current liabilities. In the case of non-current liabilities, all the financial obligations of the company that are not expected to be paid off over the next one year that are mentioned here. Non-current liabilities that cannot be easily or quickly settled. In the case of HUL balance sheet, you can find the following non-current liabilities also. In the non-current liabilities also you can find the financial liabilities. These financial liabilities are long-term debt obligations owned by the company and are required to be repaid. Ancillary and uh, miscellaneous financial liabilities like uh, uh, lease liability, employer related liabilities, security deposits, uh, all are typically classified under these financial liabilities. Provisions are also given there. So a company typically makes a provision for an existing or present liabilities on its books of account. These provisions are then supposed to be paid off by the company in the future, not in near future, maybe sometime in the future. So all the long term provisions are classified under the provisions section of this balance sheet. Next comes, next comes the non-current tax liabilities. Non-current tax liabilities consist of long term tax obligations that are required to be borne by the company but have yet been paid. So current liabilities are the liabilities of the company that are expected to be repaid within the span of one year and uh, that's uh, obviously that's called as short term liabilities also. Next uh, type of liabilities are financial liabilities. So unlike the non-current financial liabilities, these financial liabilities consist of all the short term liabilities that are owned by the company. They also include uh, trade payables which are essentially payments that are due to the suppliers of the company. For example, if uh, HL is uh, making Lex soap for the raw materials or the chemicals needed for these soaps, that suppliers will be there, the vendors or suppliers. So HL need to be paid money for those vendors or suppliers. That also comes under financial liabilities section. Next is other current liabilities. Current financial obligation that cannot be classified under any of the above uh, mentioned uh, categories are typically categorized under this current liabilities. Customer advances and statutory dues such as uh, tax deducted source TDS and provident fund payments all these things are classified under the other current liability section. And obviously the provisions that also being given all the short term and current uh, provisions are classified under the tab of provisions in the balance sheet. As uh, like the total assets, we have total liability also, also. That means the total liability, that means the entire liabilities that has been summed up, added up and given us total liabilities. So I hope uh, you got uh, an idea of the basic structure of balance sheet. So balance sheet basically these numbers hold a lot of significance. Lot of numbers we are deriving from the balance sheet that has a lot of significance and that gives a comprehensive idea of the company. So that can be used to calculate the number of ratios that give you a better idea of where the company stands and where the company is heading to. So these balance sheet ratios are the key part of fundamental analysis. And uh, in the next uh, episode, we will be getting into the details of this number in depth. So keep watching. Never miss the next episode. Signing off. I know Matthew.